This video is a tutorial walkthrough of using Scott's Blogger in Miba. From the Miba homepage, after logging in, you're going to go to the menu in the top left hand corner and down to Utilities. At the bottom of the Utilities menu, you'll click on Scott's Blogger. The main page here shows uh, the latest in Scott's Blogger updates. The general user probably won't have much use for this. It also shows you your popular content that will allow you to view as well as edit your most popular blogs. It'll also show you the hits so you can see the number of views that each of the posts have received. The next tab is content. This will give you a detailed overview of the posts that you have available on your blog. You can click to view it. You can edit the title um, in this section. It will also show you which main blog it's posted to, the categories you've assigned, um, as well as when it was updated and published. You can view your comments and the number of views, and you can also delete your post. If you want to sort the posts, you can click on the headers. Um, that will rearrange the posts so you can view them by most recently, updated, um, most views, fewest views, comments, etc. The next tab we're looking at is categories. In this section you can see all the categories that you've created which you would um, assign your blog post to. So this will show you how many articles you have categorized under each of the, the categories listed. You can also delete from here as well as create new ones. You can also create subcategories under previously created parent categories. The next tab we're going to look at is the blogs tab. This is probably only going to have one blog listed for each website. Most websites only have one main blog. The editors tab will show you who is available to, to make edits to the blog. Uh, it will also show the permissions that you've given them and allow you to change those permissions by using these checkboxes. Um, here you can see descriptions of what each of the checkboxes will, will allow. I'm going to show you how to create a new editor for your blog. Starting from the home page, you're going to click on customers and then you're going to create a new customer account, which is how editing is done with Scott's bloggers through customer accounts. So I'm going to go ahead and create an account for myself. Now that that's done, I'm going to go back and click on the menu at the top left hand corner, um, down to utilities, and again click on Scott's blogger. Clicking on the editors tab once again, I'm going to enter my email address into the bar. And I'm also going to select which permissions I'd like to assign. In this case, I'm selecting checkbox one, which will give me publisher permissions, which also allows me to create, post, and moderate anything on the blog. And I'll hit then I hit the update button. To remove somebody as an editor, just uncheck the checkboxes and hit update, and that takes them out of the list. And finally, I'm going to show you how to create a new blog post. So go to Utilities, then Scott's Blogger, and you'll want to click on the white plus sign to create a new post. You'll be asked to enter your login information here. And it's easier to start with your, with your blog content already written in a Word document, a Word processing document. That way you can easily just copy and paste things in on the next screen. So here I'm going to copy my title and paste it into the blog. And right away I'm going to save changes. That will make sure that after I save, um, autosave is activated and any changes you make will be, will be updated as you work. So you can see that that saved it as a draft, so it's not yet published. Now you can go ahead and copy and paste the body of your text. I'm going to start by inserting an image. So clicking on the image button, I'm going to select one from my computer. 
clicking to edit the image will pop up a new window. I'm going to fill out the alt text. The alt text is what will show up if your image somehow goes missing. Um, it also helps with SEO and will also help anybody if you have any site visitors who um, are visually impaired. So I'm going to fill in a description of the photo. Uh, if you want to have a caption, you can fill that in as well. And you're also able to, to change the positioning of the caption, whether you want it left, right, or center justified. And now you can see I've got a centered caption under the photo called essential oil. Now I want the photo to link to the essential oil category if somebody clicks on it. So I'm going to copy the link from the website, edit the image, and paste in the link. I'm also going to click the box to open the link in a new tab. That way, if somebody does click the image, they don't click away from the blog post. Now I want to try and link the word rose to the rose oil, essential oil product page. So I'm going to search for the, for the product, take that link, and by using the link button I can paste in the URL and again choose to open the link in a new tab. And now rose is highlighted as a, as a link to the product page. The buttons along the top of the text area have some basic formatting functions. Um, you can bold, italicize your text, create bulleted lists. You can change font style, text color, and font size. Go ahead and play with the formatting to get the post to look the way you want. The text area will also show how many words you have in your blog post. Scrolling below the text area, you can see some fields to fill in. The first one is the subtitle. Each of these fields do have a brief description next to them to give you a little bit of information what each one is about. So here I'm just going to fill in a very short subtitle um, just to display as it says display under the title and to use in the SEO microdata. I'm going to do the same thing with the synopsis and the SEO description. Um, the synopsis I'm going to take directly from the blog post. If you want to write something specific for the synopsis and the blog description, you're welcome to do that as well. And you can see it's highlighted red because the character count is over 150, 154 characters. So the character count is coming in at 175 which is fine for the synopsis, but it does mean that I'll need to shorten it for the SEO description. Now this next section is for the keywords. Um, I'm going to start en entering in tags and keywords that relate to the post. You can enter in as many as you'd like and separate them with a comma. And below that, you can see that there's a tag list that will show you previously used tags that you can then apply to this one. So for example, if you use essential oil and you're going to be using essential oil for several blog posts in the future, uh, it will provide it for you that you can easily check from the list of, of checkboxes. Now below, there's an option here for filling in an alternate image um, if you need to. Because we already have an image in this blog post, um, it's going to automatically take the image that we've already provided. If you want, you can override it. There's also an option here for related blog posts. So here I'm going to go to the blog and I'm going to select a post that's already existing. I'm going to paste in the link and um, just following the instructions that you can find under the little black and white question mark, it says to leave a space after the link and type in the words that you want it to link to. So this will provide a link to that blog post, to a related blog post, um, at the bottom of this once it goes live. Now moving to the right hand, you can see that there's categories. This is where you assign which categories you'd like the blog, the new blog post to be, to be assigned to. Under more options, there's really only a few here that most people are going to need to worry about. The first one is sticky. Um, if you choose to make a post sticky, that keeps it at the top of the page um, so that regardless of how many posts you, you, po you create afterwards, this one will stay 
at the top. It would especially be useful for something like a frequently asked questions page, anything that you want to stay right up at the top. And it will, it will stay pinned to the top of the board. The next option that you may want to change is the comments. Some websites choose to turn comments off and have them disabled. Um, you can also choose whether people can, can only leave a comment if they've logged in first. One that you do need to check is you need to turn AMP off. Um, that's a setting that we don't recommend using. Um, unfortunately, it comes already active, so you need to actively turn it off. This section, author, I can choose to override the author. Um, which means basically that instead of showing my name when the blog post goes live, it'll show that it's been posted by Camden Gray in this case. The final bars that you may want to address is the uh, publishing dates. So you can choose to publish a date in uh, publish a post for some time and or date in the future. This is especially helpful if you create a lot of posts and want to have them set and ready to go for the future. You can also choose to unpublish for a certain date. This may be useful if you've got a sale post or something that you don't want to stay up for uh, for any extended length of time. So I'm going to go ahead and save my changes. And then I'm going to click the little eye icon so I can preview the post. And this is what it's going to look like once it does go live. So it's showing that it is currently a draft. It's showing the edits that I made to the formatting. There's the related link, the tags that I selected, and the comment section. Okay, that's our intro to Scott's Blogger in Miva. If you still have questions or you need a hand, feel free to contact us and we'll be happy to help.